So suppose we have a table with an identity field and the identity field hits a certain value and we delete one of the values and we notice that when we insert new values into the table that the ident identity field continues. Um, even though we've deleted a table, it doesn't reset. So for instance, let's suppose we have 10 values in a table and uh, the ID field of course is 1 through 10 and we delete the 10th value but when we insert a new value it's at 11 it's not at 10 that's because a delete does not reset the identity field so I'm gonna create a table here uh, this will be small end Uh, just as a test, just to show you some of uh, some interesting things about the field identity. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert into ID test, and we're going to insert the value because ID. Remember the identity field here; it's going to populate starting at one, and it's going to increment by one. Um, and we'll insert values dog and cat and chicken. And then what we want to do is we're going to select star from ID test. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to delete from ID test where ID equals 3. Then we're going to insert into ID test this right here. And we're going to insert the value goat. You can tell I lived on a farm since I'm just inserting farm animals. Okay, I don't know why that took so long, but so we have three values. And I'll demonstrate what a delete does here. So we're going to delete chicken. You'll notice, of course, the ID field. It's the identity. It's incrementing by one, right? One, two, three. The next value would be four. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to delete chicken. So if we look at our table now, we have dog and we have cat, right? So we're going to insert the value of goats. Let's look at our table now. And you'll notice that goat is 4. So when we delete from the table, it does not reset the last identity. Now, why is that important? Well, let's compare for a second. And so what I'm going to do for a comparison, I'm going to drop the table. And then the next thing I'm going to do for a comparison this time around is we've inserted the values, right? So now we're back to our normal values. So you have dog, cat, chicken. Okay. But we want goats instead of chicken. So what we can do to do that is we can actually truncate the table, which will delete everything. That's one of the ways we could do. So you'll notice there's nothing in the table. So what we can do is then we can go up here, we can insert the dog, and we can insert the cat. And then we can insert goats. And then we can select star from the ID test. So now goats is three, which is what we originally wanted. Okay, so we see what happens when we delete, and we see what happens when we do the truncation. Now, some of you are probably pretty smart, and you're like, well, is there another way that we can do this? In other words, is there a way that I can reset my identity values to the last identity. So basically, I don't want to have to truncate the whole table and reinsert these values and then insert goats. I would like to be able to just um, reset the value after I deleted the chicken. So I'll take this back out. I'll go ahead and drop the table again. And I will cut this and put it down here. We're not going to use that. Okay, so 
we are going to insert these values. So we have our values in the table, dog, cat, and chicken. We're going to delete from ID test where the identity equals three. Okay, so now we know if we insert this value here, goats, it's going to start at four, right? So we need to find a way to get this value to be four without truncating the table. And so I'm going to introduce one of our dbcc check commands, and that's dbcc check identity. And I'll explain the command in a second. Okay, so dbcc check identity. This is going to check the identity. This right here is the table name. It's going to go between two single quotes. No reseed means we're not doing anything to the table. In fact, I think I'll test this out. I think I did this. Does the same thing. So you could just do ID test. You don't even need to put no reseed. Okay. So the current identity value is three, and the current column column value is three. Now let's look at that again. Let's look at the table. This is what we have. We have dog and we have cat. So let's look at what it said. It said, so we have two values, remember, but it's saying that the current identity value is three and the current column value is three. What this message means is that if we insert a new data here, a new, new um, some new data, this goats, it's going to be the value of four because DBCC check identity thinks right now that the table is at a column value of three and an identity value of three, which as we know is not correct. Okay, we know that it's actually currently at um, a column value of two. So let's look at it again just to prove it. Our column value is at two and our identity value is at two. So what we can do is another command, another dbcc check command, and we could do check identity and we could do the table name and now we can do reseed. Now you understand where no reseed comes from. And we're going to reseed it at the value of two. Because remember, if we look at our table, that is where our identity value is. That's where our column value is. That's our latest value. So now notice, now when we run the check identity on the table again. Notice now, current identity value is two, current column value is two. Let's look at our table. Our identity value is two, our column value is two. That is correct. So when we insert goats, what should we see? Column value three, identity value three. And if we look at the, uh, if we check the table identity, you will notice that's where it's at. So we don't have to truncate the table on an ID field or identity field. I'm sorry. What we can do instead is we can um, reseed the table. Now the key is, and this is what causes some confusion. People will be like, "Well, how, how do I know if this is two or one?" You look at your table. For instance, if we were going to reseed this table, we don't need to. But if we were going to, what is your most recent column value? And what is your most recent identity value? That's what you're wanting to reseed here. For instance, the identity value would be three, so we would want to reseed it to three, basically the latest point. Because what that means is when we insert a new value, it's going to be this value plus one. That's what we did this last time. We did two. Remember, we reseeded it to two. Then we inserted the goats value, and goats became three. Uh, so it's that value plus one. So this is kind of an example of one of the ways in which you can use uh, the reseed here, excuse me, um, to basically go with an identity uh, <clears throat> to go with an identity column. Now, understand like in SQL Server, there's multiple answers to every problem, right? There's not just one answer to a problem. Um, there, there are some arguments against an ID field, and I may go into that in a later video because it gets into a little bit more advanced development in SQL Server, but it's very important to understand. 
I usually use an ID field on some of my tables because I don't have you know professionals reporting on them. It's a little bit different. But if I'm in a professional environment, an identity field might not be the best field for an ID. Um, there are some downsides to it, and so uh, one of the ways, just as a case in point, is you can declare an integer and then you can update a table and you can set the value equal to the value plus the value plus one. I'm sorry, the value equal to the value equal to the value plus one, which gets really confusing at the time. But what it is is it will automatically increment the value in the table and it's mathematically done. Um, and so you don't have the problems. As a case in point, just as a side note, there have been several posts I've seen on Stack Overflow where someone posts and says, hey, why did the identity value all of a sudden skip a thousand you know, places? And it's one of those errors, at least some of the answers to that question is it can happen. So it's not, again, like I said, that's why there's some debate on identity. Um, it's not something that that uh, you may find everybody using and that's the reason why uh, there might be some of those those errors out there there are multiple ways to solve every problem but if you have a problem like this and again for a lot of OLAP environments quite frankly an identity one one field is great um, and like I use it in my stock data and it hasn't it just hasn't failed me whatsoever and a lot of that is because I have a, a map reduce schema or similar map reduce schema I should say for my stock data so I don't never I never get to a million rows. I never get to where the identity field becomes a problem, but it, it can become a problem as time goes on. But anyway, hopefully this will answer some of your questions. If you ever want to know, hey, how do I how do I change that value? How do I get that that, that identity value back to where it was? It's skipping uh, numbers. This is how you do that.